you probably have this common item in your house and might genuinely believe it's completely harmless. However, numerous scientific studies and extensive research clearly show that this particular substance is a significant and primary cause of aggressive behavior, as well as severe and irreversible liver damage. This significant factor I'm about to inform you about, in particular, accounts for up to 50% of all cases of severe acute liver failure. Indeed, critical liver failure. This is a very serious condition. And I'm also going to show you how to protect yourself how you can protect yourself from this, and also how to identify the signs and symptoms that your liver is being attacked, that it's being harmed. A lot of people think that the main cause of liver failure is alcohol, but that's not the case. Studies clearly show that when it comes to acute and sudden failure, especially when it happens very quickly, there is indeed another significant cause that is much more commonly observed and encountered. And that's what this video is going to be about. Let's begin by thoroughly discussing how you can potentially suspect what exactly are the noticeable signs and various symptoms you'll personally feel and what your body will visibly show. This is crucial to understand that your liver might be significantly affected quite acutely in a very rapid and sudden way. Fundamentally, there are two primary types of liver diseases, or rather two distinct groups, to explain this concept much better and more comprehensively. The first group is acute diseases, which attack the liver quickly. The second group is chronic diseases, which destroy the liver little by little. They're also extremely dangerous. Why is that? A lot of people don't notice this and don't treat these chronic causes, which harm the liver little by little. So they're dangerous too. The word chronic often gives some sense of relief when I mention it to patients. But no, both diseases, both groups, are extremely dangerous because the liver is a vital organ. You need your liver to be healthy in order to detoxify your body and produce clotting factors. The liver is involved in several pathways of our metabolism. So let's talk about the signs and symptoms of acute liver failure, which is when something is damaging the liver quickly. There are nine signs and symptoms that the first sign that your liver has a problem is general signs of feeling unwell. Nausea, vomiting, you lose your appetite. These are those non-specific signs. That's why I put them all as number one. Here, it covers all of these signs. So you feel extremely tired. You wake up already feeling exhausted. You have trouble doing physical activities. You feel nauseous. You're listless, vomiting, and you don't want to eat anything. And it's important to recognize this early, because this group of symptoms usually appears first. It's the first sign, the first manifestation that your liver is being affected, that there's liver damage. So it's really important to be alert at this stage. One time, I was working in the ER. I spent many years working in emergency care. And a patient came in saying, oh, I think I have a problem with my liver. I think my liver is being damaged. I asked, what did you do this morning? What have you done so far today? He said, oh, I went to the gym, I worked out, I climbed stairs, for lunch I had carbonara pasta, then I had a little coffee, and now I came to the appointment. Well, just from that, we can already tell that this patient's liver isn't currently under attack because he had an appetite and even ate, right? Carbonara has a lot of fat in it. Someone with liver problems would already feel nauseous just thinking about that. They wouldn't be doing physical activity, going to the gym. So it's important to keep in mind this first symptom I mentioned. The second one, and this one is more specific to liver problems, is a stomach pain, an abdominal pain located in the right hypochondrium. What does that mean? Plain language, very clear. It's a pain on the right side of your belly, just below the ribs, in the upper abdomen, okay? So pain in the liver area, that's where the liver is located. If you're feeling pain or discomfort there, hey, that's a big warning sign that your liver might be getting hurt. There are some videos out there saying, oh, the liver doesn't hurt. Normally, the liver doesn't hurt, but if it's being affected, especially when there's a rapid inflammation of the liver, it can definitely hurt. So pain under the ribs on the right side. The third sign, and this one is more specific and also calls for urgency because it means the liver's function is compromised, is jaundice. 
and this yellowing can start in the eyes. So the white part of the eyes turns yellow, and it can progress to yellowing of the skin, which we call jaundice of the skin. But it usually starts in the mucous membranes, in the eyes, where it's more noticeable. This is a major sign of a liver problem. There are other causes too. For example, some types of anemia. But here, you need to investigate the liver. Number four, changes in urine, changes in urine color. The urine becomes darker, and this can happen because of a liver problem, a major warning sign. If this happens, you need to seek help right away, okay? When I say seek help, I don't mean schedule an appointment. I mean go straight to the emergency room, because this is a serious sign that the liver is no longer functioning as it should. All right, so you need to take care of it as soon as possible. Sign number five, paler stools, whitish stools with a lighter tone, which in medical terms is called acholia. This also means that the liver is already losing function and is a major warning sign. So darker urine and lighter stools. Another sign that you should also go to the emergency room because you might have liver damage in an acute way. Sign number six, and this one you probably all know when it comes to liver problems, is ascites, or water belly. The belly becomes more swollen. That swelling and accumulation of fluid, which we call ascites, is also a warning sign from the liver's point of view. Sign number seven also appears in cases of acute liver failure, which is a change in breath odor, and that's also a warning sign. I'm going to use two descriptions here for this change in breath odor. The first description, which comes from a well-known book, says it's a breath that smells like rotten fruit. It's hard to define, so I looked it up in another major book as well, and this book also gives an interesting description. A breath that's sweet and musty. I don't really know what musty breath would be like, but that's how it's described, just so you have an idea. So, a breath a smell of rotten fruit, okay? If there's a change in breath, bad breath, you also need to investigate the liver, all right? Number eight, and I'm also going to include here a group of changes in the brain. Why? As you, as you start losing liver function, you can have a buildup of toxins, substances that are toxic to your brain. One of these substances is ammonia. So, when ammonia starts to increase in your blood, your brain can undergo changes. So, you might experience disorientation, mental confusion, you might mix up dates or places, for example. Some people also have behavioral changes, agitation. There can be changes. The person becomes more aggressive. Drowsiness. These are the changes in the central nervous system of your brain. And if it's not treated, it can even lead to coma. So mental confusion and changes in consciousness are also warning signs of liver diseases due to the buildup of toxins. And the ninth sign of liver failure, that the liver is having problems, is coagulation problems. The liver also produces clotting factors that help our blood to clot. So if you have any issues with this, you may be more prone to bleeding easily. And also, this is a sign of liver problems. So changes in coagulation, bleeding, hemorrhages, and now, what are the causes? And what is that cause I mentioned, which accounts for 50%? And if you look at this group for that cause, it's up to 60%. It's important to point out that here, I'm talking about data from the United States, okay? Depending on the country, there may be some differences. However, these are American data, which we use as a main reference. And this cause, which is the number one cause that you really need to watch out for, is acetaminophen. Did you know that? About 50% of liver failure cases are due to this medication called acetaminophen. And if we include other medications in this group, like antifungals, anticonvulsants, and antibiotics, this number of 50% can go up to 60 or even 65%. Look, that's extremely significant. So you really need to pay attention to something here, okay? To the compounds that contain acetaminophen and also to the amount of acetaminophen you're taking. Self-medicating, especially with acetaminophen, can be very dangerous. So what are the steps you should take to protect yourself? 
First, only take medications containing acetaminophen, only with a doctor's prescription. This is very important because, as in many places, acetaminophen is sold over the counter. A lot of people have access to this medication, and there's also a high rate of self-medication. And often, these doses end up being added together, stacked up. A person takes one pill and then takes another compound, those cold and flu remedies. These have several medications in them, and they also contain acetaminophen. This ends up stacking doses, which is very dangerous for the liver. Or sometimes the person already has a condition, a problem, with the liver, liver damage. And then even lower doses of this medication can already be harmful to the liver. In fact, there are cases of people who end up needing a liver transplant because of this medication, which I mentioned here, and it's something that's rarely talked about. So that alone deserves your like, right? So go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel if you didn't know this information. I have to admit, it surprised me. It's also worth mentioning that there are many supplements that can harm your liver. So many times a person is using a product that contains acetaminophen and also taking a supplement that's metabolized in the liver, often with substances that are harsh on the liver, and then takes even more acetaminophen. All of this combined can also harm the liver. You saw that, right? Acetaminophen alone accounts for 50% of the cases. If you add more medications, it's 60 to 65% of the cases in the United States. So this is really, really important. Three cases of acute liver failure, two cases. You, because of this, it's very important. Protect yourself, be careful, check the labels to see if they contain this substance, ask your doctor, and only take medications with a medical prescription because this can be very dangerous. Self-medicating is extremely dangerous. And what are the other causes? There are infectious causes, viral ones like hepatitis A, hepatitis B, hepatitis C viruses. Autoimmune diseases can also attack the liver. There is a group, which are the indeterminate causes, where even after investigation, it is not possible to find out the real cause. There are also other diseases, like Wilson's disease, the accumulation of copper in the liver, which can also cause liver failure. But the most frequent cause, which we are going to focus on here, is this one. The one I mentioned that you need to be very careful about, and a lot of people are asking, but what about alcohol? And aren't alcoholic beverages included? In this list of things that harm the liver, the answer is yes, they are included. However, alcohol causes chronic damage. It's one of the main causes of chronic liver damage, where the liver keeps getting hurt, develops scars, and loses function. Also extremely serious. Along with alcoholic beverages, in this other group here, chronic liver disease, we have fatty liver disease, fat in the liver, hepatic steatosis. You know this one if you follow along here. Fat in the liver is also a major cause. In fact, it's the number one cause in many countries of chronic liver failure which also has serious consequences, leading to cirrhosis and even increasing the risk of liver cancer. From zero to 10, what score would you give this video? If it's a 10, I'll make more videos like this one. Let me know which part of the world you're from. I'm speaking from Porto Alegre, right in the comments below. Did you hear what I said about fat in the liver, which is also a major cause of chronic liver disease? Do you wanna know more about fat in the liver? Which foods are you gonna avoid? Which foods can you eat? It's really important for you to notice. In this video, I talk about that and give the main tips about fat in the liver. Take care. See you next time.